Hi, my name is Everett. Welcome to the shop. This week we have a bit of a tool making project. I stole an idea from Chris from Chris B257, another uh, internet uh, YouTube uh, machining channel. And uh, what he was doing was he was making a uh, drill chuck tap handle so that you can actually use the drill chuck to start your taps after you've drilled the hole on the mill or the drill press that you're working with. Now, mine has this one here. It's a, it, I, it, I have an import uh, uh, mill drill, round column mill drill, and this is the chuck that came with it. So, uh, whatever brand it is. Um, and so what I did was I took some measurements off of this for the uh, diameter of the body there, diameter of the um, the outside sleeve, uh, distance from the end of the uh, taper to the center of the hole and to the edge of the teeth on the, on the outside sleeve. A little bit of time, a little bit of Fusion 360 came up with the measured drawing. Now this measured drawing has the uh, dimensions for this chuck, um, a tap panel that will be three inches in diameter, uh, about an inch and a quarter height, um, and then the thing is these holes here are eight millimeters, well close to eight millimeters in size. So the pin that goes through will have to be a, uh, uh, the pin that will go through have to be about a five sixteenths to go in there. I have a piece of scrap metal here that was basically given to me. I'm not entirely sure what this was from, um, but yeah it's just a cut off. So what I'm going to do is, the nice thing about this one is it's actually got this shoulder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab onto this shoulder, face, you know, machine, and it's already got the, the hole started for me in the middle. Uh, clean this outside surface off. It's about eight thou large, so it gives me just enough to clean up the outside surface um, to make it three inches. I'll clean up the inside board diameter and then start making that shoulder. When I'm done all that and this is cleaned up, then I'm going to take it out, cut this uh, nub off, and then use this side and face it down to width. And once we're done that, We'll make the, uh, probably make the handles while the lathe is we're still running the lathe. And then we'll go over to the mill and then I'm going to have to put holes 180 degrees apart from each other on this. One of which is a through hole with a thread down to a shoulder and the other side with a, just a blind hole with a thread. Uh, threads are 3824. I actually do have a 3824 bottoming tap so that'll be uh, handy for that. And uh, yeah. So anyway, I will need this project because, or need this tool because the next project I need to get done is I have an oil cooler off of a truck to fix and it would be really handy to be able to start the threads on the mill uh, without having to use the, the chuck key. I've just been using the chuck key in the chuck to, for a bit of leverage, so this will be a lot handier. So yeah, I'll uh, cut here and we'll get you set up, we'll get ourselves set up in the lathe. Okay, so to start with, let's mount up our material. I'm not entirely sure what material or what alloy of steel this is. I was given a few pieces of these of this sort of stuff. Somebody was mentioning something about uh, being steam pipe. I'm not sure. It's three inches diameter and with a roughly one inch hole in the center. So. Fairly skookum stuff, no matter what it is. Alrighty. Yeah. yeah, it'll work. As far as turning it for the outside diameter, we're eight thou over. Okay, we touched off there. There we go. Yeah, four thou in on the feed. Four thou in the radius makes eight thou in the diameter. Make sure my tool holder doesn't interfere with the chuck guard. Okay, on goes the chamfer tool. 
And the shaft for this edge. Yeah, it's roughly 30 thou. Okay, now it's time to switch over to the boring bar. We've got the poor man's DRO set up here with the two dial indicators for uh, width and length, or the X and Y rather. And uh, according to the print here, I need to enlarge the center opening out to 1.52 inches, 1 inch 520. So, uh, I suppose we could speed that up a little bit. Let's go, see, two, let's go 1000 RPM. Let's go to the 15th thou depth of cut and see what happens. And this is actually a lot nicer. I just got this boring bar with the CNMG insert. Okay. It actually works out fairly well. Another 30, well, 15 thou radius, 30 thou diameter. This diameter has to go all the way through. So I'm punching it out to where my dial says 1.4 inches. Another 15 thou. Not bad. Should bring us out to the neighborhood of 1.4. Yeah, there we go. 0.492. I figured it'd be 495, but yeah, there we go. 1.495. That's what I was thinking. 1 inch 495, so we're going to have to take approximately 12 and a half on radius. There we go. Nice slow feed. I'm just doing this feed manually because it's not that long of a run. One point five two four within a few thou. This isn't really a super critical tolerance. It just has to just has to fit the nose of the chuck. There we go. A little bit of play, that's fine. Uh, Fifteen thousandths. That's 4.95 depth. I'm going to go into 4.95 as far as my depth. I'll clean up the back surface when I'm done. Two inch ninety one. It's within a thousandth. As long as the drill check, there we go. It fits up past the edge of the sleeve. Yeah, that'll work. That's a good enough fit for what we need. Yeah, 
Yeah, for the little chamfer, we'll just use the, because it's only a 30 thou chamfer, chamfer. We'll just use the Noga deburring tool. There we go. That side's already been deburred. There we are. Not bad. So what I've done is I've uh, put the outside jaws in and then um, put the, and I've also put the, the piece of material in, in the outside jaws with uh, aluminum shims in between so I don't screw up the surface. Uh, now I measured the width of the, or the de uh, thickness of this piece. It's one inch 472 thousandths. We need one inch 250. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to pull off another 222 thousandths. Uh, for that, what I've done is I've set up the uh, dial indicator again. We have to take this little nub off the center first. That's where that shoulder used to live. taking a cut. It's a reasonable surface finish from the looks of it from the while well, it's still turning. Be mindful of those outside jaws as I move the chuck and move the tool in. There we go. There's the chamfer. Use it up a smidge. See if I can just, just peel that inside lip out. There we go. So that's peeled out now. There we go. There we go. I like it. I don't have any half inch drill rod. Uh, when I first drew up the plan, I was thinking half inch drill rod would be the cat's meow for the handles. So instead, I do have a, sm a small chunk of bar of 4140 precision ground. So I'll just use that. Now we're down to uh, facing off the uh, rods. This will be the shorter one of the two with just the uh, 3 8 thread on the end. Make sure that's in center height. Seventy thousandths have to come off, and this, truthfully, is close enough that I'm just going to use. I'm just going to use the carriage wheel for measuring this one. Is that touching? Ten. Twenty. And seventy. Good enough. For it half an inch, we have to turn down to 375. And that means we need to take 125 thou off diameter. Otherwise known as 62 and a half thou, give or take, off of by radius. So there's 10. Okay, here's 60. A 
let's see what we've got. Three eighty two, three eighty one. Need another seven thou off. Unfortunately, taking a light cut with carbide kind of throws your surface finish to crap. Yeah, 372. And now, the using the proper size wrench to grab onto the sides of the, onto the jaws. should be able to apply a little bit of pressure with the tailstock. You start screwing the piece of work into the die. Break that off, a little bit of pressure. Again, I'm not applying a super high amount of pressure from the tailstock quill because I'm still working through a thread on it. But at least now, I know that my threads are started square. Could I have single pointed this thread? Oh yeah, by all means. But for how long it is, for what I'm doing with it, I didn't necessarily think it would be necessary. go. Three eighths, twenty-four. Tap panel. Or a tap panel. Ironic. I'm going to face the end. Because on the end here, it's actually got a concave surface because of the well, how it came from the mill. Okay, my apologies for that. Uh, I didn't realize that the one camera's card had filled up and it quit f taking video on me. I will have had to use the audio off the other camera. We've already taken 10 thousandths off on radius. 20 thousandths radius. 40 thousandths diameter. Okay, so this is 60. It should theoretically be a 120, 120 thousandths in diameter. Three eighty five, three eighty six. Need to take another ten thousandths or so. Anyone? Good enough. So there we are. So for 372, you need to take about 60 thou.
That gives us 309, 308, close enough. There we go, we're up to the shoulder. So that's up to the shoulder with the tapered side. What we're going to do now is we're going to flip it around, clean everything off. Flip the die nut around. Re retighten the screw. There we go. All right, this concludes the this concludes the lathe work portion. Um, now that I have the two handles done, so I have two of the uh, the two handles done. The fixed handle that threads in and stays put in the uh, tool. This is the movable uh, handle with the pin on the end that engages into the drill chuck. So now it moves, we move over to the mill and uh, set up the uh, body of the tool and uh, drill our two holes, drill and tap two holes. Okay, so got our clamp to the table. This way it'll be a lot more rigid than I can hold it. Have my uh, vernier height gauge, it's a start 254, set to 1.5 inches, one inch, one and a half inches even. I've wiped the table down. Just going to take, use this to scribe a line in the front. Yes, it'll leave a bit of a scratch in there, but such is life. So now I can use these uh, lines against the very edge of the mill vise, and that should get me within a degree or so, I should say, of 180 degrees. So what I've done now is I've taken and mounted the uh, body of the tool in the uh, milling machine vise. Took the two scribe lines and put them right near as near as I could find to the top of the front, uh, or top of the movable jaw. What I've also done is because I don't really have anything for a stop setup or whatever, I've taken and clamped a one two three block, just pushed up against the fixed jaw of the of the vise and clamped it down so that will be my hard stop. Theoretically, once I find the location half an inch from the back surface, as well as the center line in the x-axis, then what that should allow me to do is that should allow me to just flip this part over to get the other hole, as long as I have those two marks lined up against the uh, mill uh, vise. Then we'll just bring it gently over where it stops turning. Oh. Try that again. Stops turning, and once it kicks, right there, yeah, the graduated collar on the table is now zero. So now all I have to do is now move um, the whole table, the x-axis, this way by uh, 1.4 inches. Let's lock off our x, and yeah, we're we're centered. Now for the y. There we go. Verifier zero. Yep, we're good. So up. So one hundred thousandths for the width of the uh, to account for the width of the edge finder. One, two, three, four, and five. There we go. 
that's where we need to make our hole. There we go. So what we'll do is we're going to start by making the, the blind hole. Yeah, that was good. We'll make the blind hole because that way if we mess it up we can always you make this the open hole and use the other side as a blind hole. So we're in a pilot drill with 3 sixteenths. Need to drill this a half inch deep. There's 500. Tap drill for a 3 is a letter Q. Uh, now what we need to do is need to thread the hole. Another instance where having the having this tool would be somewhat useful for making this tool. I'm going to have to um, pull it out more often, and blow the chips out more often because it's a blind hole and I'm not using a spiral tile style tap that actually peels the chips outward. I don't have one in this thread pitch. But yes, this would actually be a situation where that well, basically the tool I'm building would be useful for building this tool. And this hole is done. Well, the threading portion anyway. There we go. Yeah, good. All right, so that's for the fixed handle. Uh, I don't do this very often. But yes, I'm going to use a milling cutter in a drill chuck. Just a light cut. I'm not going to bother removing the chuck just for this. It's not, I'm just only taking a few thousandths off. We'll flip it around and then we're going to do this. The blind hole is done. We're going to do the through hole, drill, bring it out to size, bring out to size for the small diameter, drill down the depth we need for the large diameter, and then tap it in spot face, and we're done. So we got the part flipped around. Um, again, lining up those two marks against the movable jaw. Being as we haven't moved the table in any which way, and we're still up against our hard stop and using those two index marks. We should be good to go. Start with the spot drill. Now this one will be easier because it's not a blind hole. We can actually drill right through this guy. There you go, we're through. I'm just going to use a 5 16 5 16 oh, craftsman drill. That's a few years old. There we go. Our letter Q is our tap drill. Sure enough, I see a little shoulder down there. There, I can feel it. 
Well, there you have it. She's tapped. There we go. That's all that's needed. Small amount of deburring, and she's done. It's our uh, drill chuck tap handle. Fixed jaws over here. I can tighten up or fixed handle. I tighten up my movable handle. A little bit of play in there, that's okay. But uh, I mean, I don't want it to be too tight either. But now, with the tension off of the, I can take the tension off of the quill, and I can use that for actually using some downward pressure and getting my tap started straight. It, for smaller taps, this is actually going to be ideal because it actually gives me a fair amount of feel once I take the tension off the belt. It gives me a fair amount of feel with the handles as to what I have for uh, resistance on the tap. And then um, it keeps it nice and straight and rigid. So I think this is going to be a very handy little addition to the toolkit. Like I say, it would have been kind of, it's kind of ironic, it would have been kind of handy in actually making of this tool to actually have this tool, but hey, I have it now. I've actually been wanting one of these for a while, um, ever since I saw Chris make his. Thanks Chris for the idea, that was really cool. Um, I'll, uh, like I say, I made up my measure drawing. You may have to make slight adjustments to it to fit your uh, drill chuck. If you want a copy of the uh, CAD drawing that I made up, I will, you know, just email me or send me a message or whatever and I will send you a, uh, I'll gladly email you a copy. Uh, you may, again, you may have to adjust some of the dimensions for your chuck. So, otherwise, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Please like the, vi if you like the video, please click the button. Um, yeah, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still in the fairly early stages of this uh, whole YouTube channel thing, and uh, anybody who wishes to subscribe, I am totally tickled every time I see that little uh, counter go up. So, yeah. Have a good week. See you next Wednesday.